Codes. Invest in some better locks. You should not have come to Malakor. She will break you, your mind, your body. You will be lost. Return to the surface. Let the planet claim you, as it claimed the other Jedi. There is no reason for you to suffer at her hands. I cannot. If you pass, you shall not return as you are now. Return to Malakor, or go through me. There is no middle ground. It is not mercy. What awaits you will weaken you. She will break you, as she did me. And you will no longer know yourself. You and her are alike, yet different in all the ways that matter. And I hate you as I hate her. I hate you because you crawl within my head as she does. But your presence holds no thoughts, no teachings. You are just... there, unspoken. I hate you because you are beautiful to me. And in that weakness lies death. Perhaps, in that weakness, is the death of my master as well. What it has always been, her weakness, is you. The power of the dark side is what holds me together. Many times have I been near death, and always have I been in pain.
then turn from this place. Do not go to her. Preserve yourself. You are strong. I cannot see as she does, but I know that in time you shall surpass her power, but not here, not in this place. I am ready for you, Exile. I have waited years to see the last of the Jedi fall before me. Only one may serve my master. Oh, oh, oh. There is no life without the Force. The Force is a blade. Without it, one is defenseless. She sought you out because both of you were wounded by the Force, and because she had no choice. She would not willingly return to being the helpless woman she once was, nor would her apprentice. If you will not leave this place, then I cannot allow you to pass. If you go before her, you will be broken. If killing you will spare you what lies ahead, then kill you I must. Oh! 
If I die here, then you will have sealed your fate. No, it is you that she has marked for death, for suffering. I, I still have the power to stop you. The Force runs strong through the screaming canyons of Malachor. I can die a hundred times exile and still I will rise again as strong as before. I will not fall. I cannot die. Why? Why did she choose you? What makes you able to defeat me? Defeat me here! The Force is who I am. The dark side fills me. It is what I am. Kreia, she will try to break you, to teach you how far someone can fall. Her weakness is you, as you were mine. I am glad to leave this place at last.
last you have arrived is Malakor as you remember. Indeed. Perhaps it is merely your perceptions of me that have changed. It is strange that you believe Malakor has not. But it has always been timeless to you, this place, and words have always been inadequate for the horrors that took place here. The apprentice must kill the master. If you do not, I will kill you. If I do not, then all you have achieved will be as nothing, as empty and as violent as Malakor itself. Then you will break, and then, my apprentice, you shall die. I have thought of this moment more than you know, and I wondered if here, at this ending between us, if you would care enough to try to save me, if a Jedi could find it within themselves to spare one who has fallen so far. I wanted you to say those words. For that I am grateful. But I do not want your mercy. I want you to break. You no doubt have many questions. I would be a poor teacher if I did not give you the answers you seek here now. It is said that the Force has a will. It has a destiny for us all. I wield it, but it uses us all, and that is abhorrent to me, because I hate the Force. I hate that it seems to have a will, that it would control us to achieve some measure of balance when countless lives are lost. But in you, I see the potential to see the Force die, to turn away from its will, and that is what pleases me. You are beautiful to me, Exile. A dead spot in the Force, an emptiness in which its will might be denied. I use it as I would use a poison, and in the hopes of understanding it, I will learn the way to kill it. But perhaps these are the excuses of an old woman who has grown to rely on a thing she despises. you were expecting some surprise for me to reveal a secret that had eluded you, something that would change your perspective of events, shatter you to your core. There is no great revelation, no great secret. There is only you. No, there were not. In times past and in times future, 
there are Jedi who will stop listening to the Force, those that will try to forget it but maintain unconscious ties. And those, as in the past, just as I, who have had the Force stripped from them. But no Jedi ever made the choice you did, to sever ties so completely, so utterly, that it leaves a wound in the Force. It was a mistake to try to make you feel it again. I see that now. There is no truth in the Force. But there is truth in you, Exile. And that is why I chose you. Yes, always. From the moment you awoke, I have used you. I have used you so that you might become strong, stronger than I. And I used you to make those who wounded me reveal themselves so they could be killed by the Republic. I used you to keep the Lords of the Sith from condemning the galaxy to death with their power unchecked. I used you to lure them to Telos, where they could be at last fought and killed. I used you to reveal Atris's corruption so that her teaching could be ended before it began. I used you to gather the Jedi so they could be destroyed. And I used you to make those who wounded me reveal themselves so they could be killed by the Republic. never destroyed Atris. She had destroyed herself. I merely stripped away the illusion and brought her truth. Her teachings could not be allowed to continue, and like Malachor, she was part of your past, unresolved. She needed to be something you could confront and defeat one last time. It was part of your training, part of what was needed to make you complete. And there must always be a Darth Treyer. The galaxy needs its betrayers, especially in the times to come. She loved you, you know, as one loves a champion. You were all that she could not be. Yes, it is all that is left unsaid upon which tragedies are built. More echoes traveling through the Force. More talk of machines and threats. If you would end Malachor, then do it. But it will not be a victory for you. And of course you must be willing to die. To kill us all. And your friends. You may hold Malachor in your grasp. But I hold the answers to your past and future in mine. Would you destroy us both before learning them? If so, then do it. For you have already failed me. I know. But there is more than death in this galaxy, and you shall not find it easy. It was difficult to draw you here, but it had to be done. This place is your last test. It is the graveyard of the past, where you lost everything. It is the dark place in your mind that still echoes of failure. Now we shall see if you can overcome the weight of Malachor and silence the echoes that beat from its heart.
If you do not kill me, I shall end you. Strike me down. End this. Show me mercy. I will see you break before you do. By killing me here, you have rewarded me more than you can possibly know. It is your choice. I had hoped you would follow Revan's path, but you and Revan are different, and your path is your own. You may take one of the ships that orbit Malachor and depart this place, or 
You may remain here on Malachor and wait for the others, those touched by the Force, who will come in time. Or you may return to your exile, where your presence will no longer affect the actions of others. There is no dishonor in any of these choices. I only ask that you make the choice without regret. Many things do I see as I gaze here from the heart of Malachor. This place channels such energies. If it matters to you at this last moment, I shall look into the future and tell you of what I see. It is my last gift to you, from one exile to another. The Republic will fall, as it always has, a fall that will take millennia under the care of the herds of Ithor. The surface of Telos will bloom again, and its golden fields shall again harbor scientists and thinkers. And complacent and peaceful, it shall forget the time that Saul Karath orbited it and brought fire to its skies. But it shall be a home world again to others who will stretch out across the galaxy and bring life. Dantooine shall lie in ruins as was intended when Malak's fleet brought death to the planet. Its surface will become home to nomads and primitives who will walk upon the ruins of the Jedi Enclave and not know upon the histories they tread. Nar Shaddaa shall persist as it always has, but there will be a heart to the world where there was nothing before, where once the lost and disposed were trapped there. Now they will struggle and grow. From despair shall come hope. Queen Talia shall have a long reign. Much good will come of it. She will, as she has, rule wisely and well. Onderon shall remain in the Republic, and the world shall prosper, though its people shall, over time, lose their customs in the ocean of the Republic and become the people of Onderon no longer. Korriban shall be as it always was. A graveyard for the darkest of the Sith Lords, still whispering within their tombs. It shall always be a source of evil, spawning threats throughout the millennia. It, like Malachor, brushes the edges of the Empire that waits in the dark. And like Malachor, the Sith have forgotten it. For a time, they will remember. Revan knew this. You travel with them for so long, yet you do not know them still. 
Feel them through the force, feel what they feel, hear their thoughts and know them, as I fought to know you. They were the lost Jedi, you know. The true Jedi, upon which the future will be built. They simply needed a leader and a teacher. She will stop hunting life and instead live it. She was not born to be a predator, despite her true father and the life she led within the shadow of Narshada. She will miss you and think of you often. You who awakened her to what life is. She will live, but only for a time. Her death will occur in many years' time on a forgotten planet, saving the lives of others. But it will be her choice, and she will have no regrets. Many battles does that one have left in him, as Revan intended. A general needs an army as he needs those he trusts. And Candorus is a loyal beast, no matter how much he is broken upon Revan's will. But you know this. They will die a death that will last millennia until all that remains is their code, their history, and in the end, the shell of their armor upon the shell of a man too easily slain by Jedi. The blinded one shall return to her home world, and she shall look upon the surface of that world and perhaps at last see what she was meant to see. Her life has been changed by your meeting in ways that may not be felt for decades to come. Salvation is a relative thing, but as you understand it, yes. He cannot help but love you in his way. It is a pure, ideal love he holds, yet somehow it never dulls in your presence or through your actions. If he leaves this place, he will leave the galaxy behind him. He will sit upon the new council, reluctantly, as all good men do. And he will not forget the Jedi who had lost the Force, yet showed him the way to reclaim it. After that, I do not know. I do know that you must leave him behind. The same choice that Revan made. Where you are destined, you must not take anyone you love. And of the ones who traveled with you, that is all I see. Atten is, as always, the fool, and the Force watches out for one such as him, I feel, as it does for the old such as I. He is a fool. And that should answer all your questions. He has nothing to offer one such as you. And even a fool such as Atten is not so ignorant of that fact.
would have killed the galaxy to preserve you. I would have let the galaxy die. You are more rare than you know, and what you have taught yourself must not be allowed to die. You are not a Jedi, not truly, and it is for that that I love you. Their paths are unknown to me. Even the small one who waits for you outside this place? I sense it has one last journey for you. You must go where Revan did, into the unknown regions, where the Sith, the true Sith, wait in the dark for the great war that comes. It is because she remembered what lay buried here, this place, its teachings. It paved the way to Korriban, you know, the remnants here. And because Malachor, like Korriban, is on the fringes of the ancient Sith Empire, where the Sith wait for us in the dark. Have we? You thought that the corrupted remnants of the Republic, the machines spawned by technology that Revan led into battle, were the Sith? You are wrong. The Sith is a belief, and its empire, the true Sith Empire, rules elsewhere. And Revan knew the true war is not against the Republic. It waits for us beyond the Outer Rim, and she has gone to fight it in her own way. And she left the Ebon Hawk and all its machines behind, for she knew she would not need them. And like you, she knew she must leave all loves behind as well, no matter how deeply one cares for them. Because such attachments would only bring doom to them both in the dark places where she now walks. It would have helped had she made him understand. But a hero of the Republic, no matter how brave, cannot understand war as Revan did. Because I did not know where she had gone. If she had asked, would I have gone? I do not know. But she will need warriors, Sith and Jedi, any who can be sent after her into the depths of space for any who know the way. Perhaps you shall go there with her and do battle at the end of all things. Instead, I remained here and now show others the way. Need any company? I mean, I'm not doing anything. Besides, if I'm not around to bail you out of trouble, who knows what could happen? All right then, where are we going again? I mean, because last time we were heading towards this mining colony on the edge of space and there was this Sith Lord and...